For anybody familiar with the Resident Evil franchise, Albert Wesker is no surprise. With his impact spread throughout the series, he stands tall as the main villain of Resident Evil. Exceptional genetics, evil mastermind, power nexus, there's so much to unpack when it comes to Wesker. Welcome to Marvelous Videos as we explore the deadly lore of Albert Wesker. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Albert Wesker and what are his origins? Albert was the son of a couple who possessed superior genes. So when Oswald Spencer started Project W under the Umbrella Corporation with the aim to raise children with higher genetic potential into superior humans, Albert's story got a head start. He also had a sister named Alex, who was also a part of this eugenics program. Once inducted, Albert showed immense growth and rose to be the top specimen of the project. When he turned 17 years old, he joined the Umbrella Corporation and and started working with Dr. James Marcus at the management training facility in 1977. He met a fellow genius named William Birkin, and the two became close colleagues. They earned Dr. Marcus's rare trust. They were transferred to work on the T-virus in the Arkley Mountains after the shutting down of the training facility. They proved instrumental in this research over the next 13 years. They were part of the three stages of the T-virus development, which gave birth to the first tyrant prototype in 1988. His life took a major turn when he and Birkin received an order to eliminate Dr. Marcus from Spencer to safeguard his interests by removing the competition. They stole the T-virus research after killing their mentor. The close bond between them started to fall apart when Spencer greenlit Birkin's research on G-virus in 1991. Albert grew wary of his boss's plans and moved to Umbrella's intelligence bureau. Around this time, he also met Alex Wesker for the first time, who not only agreed but also supported Albert's ideas to dominate the world and transcend their limitations. His sly demeanor successfully placed him as a double agent within STARS, the Special Tactics and Rescue Service, as captain of the Alpha Team. His string of betrayal would reach its zenith when he went against Umbrella as part of a separate organization looking to capitalize on Umbrella's research. He decided to fulfill his dream of world domination by using the Euroboros virus, which was shattered by Chris Redfield and BSAA. He finally met his death in Resident Evil 5, but his legacy carried on with his son, Jake Muller, who inherited the enhanced physiological gifts from his father, leading to the development of the C-Virus. How did Wesker betray Stars and Umbrella? In 1998, during his stint at the Raccoon City Police Department, where he founded Stars, he was working as a double agent. He was feeding information to Umbrella to keep the police from sniffing around their business. When a string of gruesome murders in Arkley Mountains rocked the city, they were forced to act. Umbrella and Wesker both knew that this was due to their virus outbreak, so they hatched a plan to use other Stars team members as test subjects for their bioorganic weapons. Stars Bravo team was sent in to get control of the situation, while Wesker and Birkin were instructed to capture the abandoned training facility. To their surprise, they met with a reanimated Dr. James Marcus, and their plan was not followed. Wesker decided to destroy the facility and leave Umbrella for good, but it wasn't going to be easy. He was stopped by Sergei Vladimir, an Umbrella enforcer, and his tyrant, who reminded him of his orders. Wesker tried to sneak his way out by saying that the outbreak had spread too far and the facility needed to be destroyed. Not convinced, Sergey and Wesker got into a fight in which Wesker kills the tyrant. To Wesker, this battle was a test of his abilities. As explosions rock the facility, he's able to escape the situation. He sent in the Alpha team when there was no response from the Bravo team. Upon arrival, they were met with rabid Cerebrus dogs cornering them to take shelter in the mansion, an underground umbrella facility known to Wesker. He further manipulated the team, using his position to split them up to face B.O.W.s. He killed Enrico Marini when he he discovered the truth. Chris Redfield and Jill ultimately discover the reality and destroy the T-002 tyrant and the facility. It was Wesker's idea to unleash T-002 to learn about its capabilities against opponents. But his plans didn't stop there. He had injected himself with a virus that he obtained from Birkin, which gave him superhuman strength and speed and regenerative powers. So when the tyrant seemingly killed him, he allowed his regenerative abilities to kick in. When everyone had gone, he came back, but with even less 
less humanity in him and tried to steal the data from the facility. But he had been locked out by the Red Queen, an advanced computer program, and the data had been moved to the Russian base. He fought his way through the BOWs and even ended Lisa Trevor before exiting the mansion before it blew up. He left with a hatred for both stars and Umbrella, and a plan to exact his revenge. How did Wesker get his superhuman powers? Wesker was already a gifted individual when he was born due to his exceptional genetics, which was further enhanced by the rigorous training and guidance of Project W. As one of the last surviving members of this program, he further evolved his powers when he injected himself with the progenitor virus. He gained superhuman strength, which allowed him to lift entire steel girders and even destroy a B.O.W. with just a punch. In his peak form, he can even surpass super tyrants, lifting entire missiles and generating shockwaves with his punches. Another aspect of his powers was his superhuman speed. He even dodged an RPG once. He can move extremely fast and throw punches that give the illusion of teleportation. Owing to this, he can even dodge bullets by moving quickly. In his mutated form, Wesker is able to withstand heavy attacks from BOWs and even survive falling under concrete and steel. He's able to survive minor firearms and can survive severe burns. He also has superhuman endurance to fight off enemies for long durations. But the most important of them all is his regenerative ability. During the mansion incident, he survived the fatal attack of the tyrant and came back to life to escape without a scar. What makes Wesker a genius-level villain? His intellectual capabilities surpass the restrictions of just a few fields. With an IQ of 180, equal to Einstein's, he completed his doctorate in virology at the young age of 17 and joined the research team at Umbrella. He's a master of various disciplines, including mathematics, science, virology, and military tactics. The fact that he was able to move from virus development to secret services and intelligence speaks volumes about his adaptability. He not only fooled his bosses, but also infiltrated the police department to lead the STARS team and ended up as the leader of the team. Apart from developing the viruses, he also played a key role in marketing these viruses. The cunning and exceptionally sharp mind of Albert Wesker and his ability to scheme future plans that can dupe everyone and fulfill his nefarious plans definitely make him a genius-level villain. How does Wesker's arrogance lead to his downfall? With such a great mind, ego generally comes in a twin package. His self-centered ideology and his superiority complex make him a very arrogant being. It can be easily compared to having a god complex, which often leads him to underestimate his enemies. This often messes up his plans, like when Chris and Jill caught on to what he was up to and stopped him from stealing info from the abandoned training facility. What is Wesker's relationship with Alex Wesker? Even though they're not related by blood, Project W essentially made them siblings in a scientific way, as they were the rare survivors of this eugenics project. They both carry superior genes, which makes them fit for this experiment. They both share grand visions of transcending their mortal self and eventually dominating the world. While Albert wanted to achieve this using his background in virology by creating the Euroborus virus, Alex aimed at achieving immortality by trans transferring her consciousness. It's also hinted that Alex is superior to the two when it comes to strategic brilliance and intellectual prowess. Their interaction also brings forth their separate approaches in Resident Evil. His god complex pushed him to believe that Albert was made to rule while Alex focused her efforts on destroying her human limitations. However, both of them wanted to use the corporation and its resources to fulfill their personal agendas. What powers did Wesker have with the Euroborus virus? Apart from the powers we've already highlighted, the Euroborus virus gave him a few extra skills. His senses sharpened, which gave him the ability to sense minute changes in his surroundings and outsmart his enemy. It also gave him extremely sharp vision, making him capable of seeing in extremely low-light areas, almost bordering on complete darkness. It even accelerated his data processing skills. He could outthink his enemies, predict their moves, and consume and analyze vast volumes of information. He also gained the ability to generate and use Euroborus tentacles. These can crush and destroy anything that comes in their path and also infects other organisms, turning them into obedient servants for Wesker, serving his every whim mindlessly. He even has a Euroborus form that activates when he's extremely angry. This form changes his body into an even deadlier killing machine equipped with external limbs and grotesque features to strike terror in the hearts of his opponents.
How did Wesker utilize the prototype virus and his arsenal? We've already seen how the prototype virus gave Wesker his transition into a superhuman being. Apart from this, he's often seen wearing sunglasses. Though they look ordinary, they were custom made for him and made a chief component of his arsenal. When he infected himself with the prototype virus, his eyes turned red. The sunglasses were essential to hide them from the public eye. He also carries a semi-automatic pistol. It's a Beretta 92F custom-built sidearm with a 15 round capacity. It can be equipped with a silencer and also a laser guiding module. It also uses specialized parabellum bullets. PG-67AW is a specialized serum that Wesker carried in his arsenal to keep the prototype virus in check. What is Wesker's role in Dead by Daylight? In Dead by Daylight, Albert Wesker is introduced as the Mastermind, a playable killer in the Project W chapter. He has been pulled into the Entity as his ruthless approach is perfectly in sync with their plans. But unlike others, Wesker wants to spread the virus, trim out the weak, and conduct experiments on the survivors. He isn't just motivated by his lust for blood, but has grander plans for world domination, which place him in a league of his own. In terms of gameplay, he has this special power called Virulent Bond, which allows him to cover great distances in a split second to grab opponents. He can then throw them against a wall or strike them into the ground. He can also combine two dashes and move in complicated patterns, making it highly unpredictable. Opponents hit by Wesker are automatically infected with Uroboros virus and must find first aid sprays to cure themselves. If the infection reaches the maximum level, Wesker can simply put an end to them. He can move through the map at great speed, making it easier to defend key items such as generators. He can sense the aura of other survivors to strategize his moves. How did Wesker feature in Marvel vs. Capcom? Wesker is present in both Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and the Ultimate Edition. He appears as a playable character in the game. He's also one of the two main villains of the game, the other being Doctor Doom. In the arcade mode of the game, Galactus chooses his herald from people, Wesker, Doctor Doom, Dormammu, and Akuma. Players will face Wesker as the final boss before battling Galactus if he's chosen as the herald. There is a slight twist to this. If Dormammu or Doctor Doom is selected as the first herald, Wesker can appear as the second herald, but he will not appear if Akuma is selected as the first herald. In his own special ending of the game, Wesker miraculously defeats Galactus and wins control over the Marvel and Capcom universes. He then captures heroes and characters from both to form an army of test subjects. This falls in line with his Resident Evil persona. He wants to use the powers of these characters to further enhance his own abilities and become the ruler of the world. Can Wesker regenerate injuries? In short, yes. His escape from the mansion after being impaled by the tyrant and walking out alive without a scratch is the first incident that showcases the extent of his regeneration. In the Resident Evil 5 finale, he's able to continue an extremely long battle in a molten lava environment. Although in a weakened state, he's able to withstand the destruction of his body by the heat far longer than many B.O.W.'s. How was Albert Wesker portrayed in the Resident Evil films? In the live-action films, he appears chiefly in three of them, Resident Evil Afterlife, Retribution, and the final chapter. Although the visual connection to the game is pretty evident, the portrayal generated mixed responses and failed in some areas. The character lacks depth in the films. The video game gives Wesker a rich backstory and a paramount role in the overall narrative, but in the films, he comes across as one-dimensional. He's also represented as a clear cliche mastermind, lacking any proper motivation. His anti-hero transition in Retribution falls flat on its face, deviating way too far from the actual lore. Lastly, the way Wesker dies in the final film is devoid of any gravity. A villain of his caliber dies without a satisfying culmination of the story arc, making it feel lifeless. Conclusion. Albert Wesker's role epitomizes the Resident Evil franchise and even takes it a step further with the rich backstory of a human being transcending his limitations. His impact on the story cannot be understated, as no other boss comes even close to his versatile evil. How do you remember Wesker? Do you agree that he's truly the top boss in the game series? Let us know your thoughts, and we'll be back soon with another riveting episode. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Ready. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.